Hey, grab your Bibles. I have a brief word I want to share with you this morning just to encourage you. So go with me. Um, we'll take a break from, we've been in the series on prayer for quite some time. And um, just as we approach the Christmas season this week and next week, I just want to share a little bit with you um, from this passage just to encourage you. I just want just to encourage you this morning, just a brief word to share with you. So go with me to um, the book of Luke chapter 1. And jump down to verses 39. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Um, I'll share just from what the Lord has dropped in my spirit. Just a couple of nuggets, hopefully to encourage you this morning so you can go forth and be who God would have you to be. If you are there in Luke chapter 1, verse 39, say amen so I can know that you are there. Amen. Let me read and then we will pray and allow God to move. In those days, the text says that, I'm reading from the ESV, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has not forgotten you. Turn to the other neighbor. Say, other neighbor. neighbor. Got good news for you. God has not forgotten you. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you for you. Open our hearts as we go into your word this morning. As we just look at this very, very familiar passage of scripture. And we just draw just a couple of things from us to remind us of the fact that we are in your will. To remind us of the fact that this Christmas season, as we enter this season, this season of Advent, and we celebrate and worship you, we thank you for the gift, Lord. We thank you for your son coming into the world, God, to allow us an opportunity to have life. So as we look at these passages of Scripture, we pray for encouragement. We pray, God, that if there be one here that may have felt forgotten, that may have felt as if you turn your back on them, Lord, bring a reminder of who you are, God, and those of us that know you as Lord and Savior of our life. God, we thank you for this word, Lord, to open our hearts to hear and to be more of who you would have us to be. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but getting to vision could be extremely challenging. I mean, God gives you a word. He, he speaks to you. He says, I want to do this through you, be it in church, be it in ministry, In the case of Restoration Christian Fellowship, he's given us this vision that's larger than me, that's larger than the majority of us in here. And it's been 20 years on this journey. It's been 20 years on this road. And we can say, while we can say we have accomplished much, there is still a lot that we haven't done. There's still a long ways to go. Amen? Can I say that? And then I don't know about you, but sometimes on this journey, it gets tiring. Come on, it gets, it gets this, you feel this courage. You feel, for those of you that planted this church with us 20 years ago, you've been in the vineyard, you've been, you've been laboring for a long, long time. And you're probably saying, when is the end going to come? When is God going to really do what God said he's going to do? And sometimes you just need an encouragement. You just need motivation to go on. Come on, am I talking to myself this morning? Maybe somebody else in here, maybe you are an entrepreneur and you have a vision, you have a dream, you have something that God has deposited in you and time has lapsed and you're starting to think maybe this thing will never happen. Maybe it will never be realized. Maybe I will never do what God has purposed. Or maybe you might even be thinking, maybe I missed God. Come on, y'all. You ever felt that way? Maybe I missed him. Maybe that was not the word of the Lord. Maybe it was the burrito I had for breakfast or, or something, and we fool ourselves into thinking. But I just want to stop by 
this morning to remind you that we shouldn't let our circumstance, our situation, may I even add, the length of time dictate what God said. Come on, say amen if you're here. And so if you don't hear me say anything to you this morning, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter what it's looked like in the past. You need to know today that God has not forgotten you. Come on, say amen to that. You got to know that God, you got to know that God has not forgotten you. If you look at the text that's in front of us, I think I'm comfortable in saying the people that are living this passage, that were living that passage in that day and age, no doubt felt the same way a lot of us felt in, uh, as we kind of, we feel as if God has forgotten us. You have to realize it's been a long time at the time of the text since Adam and Eve sinned. And from the moment they sinned, God had promised that he would send a savior. He would send someone into the world to redeem the world, to reconcile the world, to bring pe people back into relationship with him. And a long time had passed. I can imagine that for every generation that transpired, that generation no doubt said God has forgotten us. Come on, because the, God hadn't showed up. And every time a prophet would show up on the scene, they were probably wondering, is this the time? Is, is this the one? Is this God doing what God said he was going to do? And when you look at the Old Testament in its entirety, you will notice that it's as if God works in these gen 14 generations at a time. So from Abraham to David, 14 generations had passed and the Messiah had not yet come. And then you get from David to the Babylonian captivity, another 14 generation had passed, and yet still the Messiah had not come. And then you get from the Babylonian captivity to the book of Matthew, and another 14 generation had passed, and then when we get to Matthew, God decides the timing is now. Now, what you need to understand that from Malachi to Matthew, commentator says 400 years of silence. Come on, y'all. That's a long time. Come on, come on. Talk to me this morning. That's a long time. Some of us get impatient, wasted, waiting two weeks. <laughs> Some of us get impatient, waiting, waiting a month. We don't have the patient, especially in this, this right now generation. I call it a popcorn era well, you've got cell phones and microwaves. It's instant gratification that when it comes to waiting on God, that's something we have a hard time absorbing and or understanding. But as you look at the text, God decides, regardless of how long it's been, he decides when the timing is right. So as we look at the text, before I can even get to the passage that's in front of us, I need you to back up to Luke. And let me just kind of narrate this, narrate and walk you through this so we can get to the passage that I want to share with you because there's some important characters that we need to see before we visit the passage that we're going to look at in the 30s, I think it's the 39th um, verse of, of this first chapter. So now God has decided after 400 years of silence, between Malachi and Matthew, he decides, based on his sovereignty and based on his providence, that the timing is now for him to allow his child to be born into the earth. Now, mind you, if you were a, a, a woman in the, the tribe or the nation of Israel, and you heard the prophecy that this tri Christ child was going to be birth, born, um, birth through the lineage of David, and you were in that lineage, I, am th I think I'm comfortable in saying every mother wished their daughter would be the mother of our Lord. And you can imagine what the conversations were, right? Um, girl, maybe you'll be it. Maybe you'll be it. And all the mothers had this dream and they had this thing that, that maybe this person was going to be the one that's going to give birth to our Lord. So they lived their life in anticipation, expecting that the Messiah would come. So the time came and God begins by, first of all, sending a forerunner by the name of John the Baptist. So if you were to look at me now in chapter 1, verse uh, 5, I want to read just a couple of passages as you walk through this. You will notice how this begins. It opens up by saying, In the days of Herod, king of Judah, 
there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elijah. Elizabeth, Elizabeth thank you, thank you. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statue of the Lord. But look at the text. They had a problem. They had a problem. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now, why am I reading this before I can get to the text? You need to lock into this. Here is two priestly individuals, two people that were sold out to the ministry, sold out to the call of God, sold out to the house of God. They had a dream. They wanted children. They wanted God to bless them. And the text says the problem that they had, that they had no children because of the barrenness. And then the author gives us some more inf information. They were both advanced in years, meaning that they were past the childbearing era. Now, I need to point that out because somebody in here, you may be feeling like Zechariah and Elizabeth right now. God, I've been faithful to you. God, I've been committed to you, and it's been a long time. I mean, I've been serving you from childhood. I've been, I've been committed. I've been faithful. I've been sold out. I've been tithing. I've been praying. I've been attending church. And, 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 and the word that came over my life is this thing is supposed to happen to me. And all this time has passed, and it seems as if God hasn't done what God said he was going to do. If I'm Zachariah and I'm Elizabeth, my frame of mind is God has forgotten me. Come on, I know I'm not talking to myself because somebody in here feels the same way. Come on. It's been a long time. And you have dreams. You have visions. You have goals. And it hadn't happened yet. And now, if I may use the metaphor, you are advanced in years and it hasn't happened yet. So you're still committed. You're still serving God. But in the back of your mind, you're saying God has forgotten you. Come on, am I talking to myself? Is there, is there any witnesses here? But look at the text. Look at the text. I'll jump down to verse, verse 13. I mean, before you go here, so now it's, it's, it's Zechariah's time turn as a priest being part of the priestly tribe to serve in the temple. And while he is serving, verse 13 says, But the angel of the Lord said to him, showed up and said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayers has been heard. Come on, that'll be a, somebody ought to be excited to hear. And, and lock into this. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. In case you missed this in the text and you kind of see where I'm going, I want to let you all know this morning, RCF, your prayers have been heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn to neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been praying for, but I stopped by this morning to let you know that your prayers has been heard. Come on, whatever it is you've been dreaming for, you need to be encouraged this morning. Your prayers have been heard. Come on, whatever you've been going through, you need to hear this morning that your prayers have been heard. It doesn't matter what the struggle is this morning. You need to know that your prayers has been heard. Are you hearing me? It doesn't matter what the stronghold is. You need to know that your prayers has been heard. Come on, somebody, that's good news. That's good news. Because in the midst of me feeling as if God has forgotten me, I get excited when I read the text that when I look at Zechariah and when I look at Elizabeth, God had released the word and they've been praying, when, Lord? But every now and then, God will stop by to say your prayers. Yeah. 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 God is not a deaf God. He hears. He hears. Now, now, in him hearing, you also need to hear me say, because he heard it the first time, does not obligate to respond when you want him to. <laughs> but the truth exists that your prayers 
Yeah, you get it, you get it. Your prayers has been heard. So look at the text, look at the text. I'm going to get to what I want to talk about. It says in verse 10, go to verse uh, 18. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? And look at this. I'm an old man. My wife is advanced in years. That means the plumbing don't work no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the angel answered him, watch this, I am Gabriel. And I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, he says, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which shall be fulfilled in your midst. I don't know how else to draw a quick application from this, but the fact that Gabriel said to Zechariah, I stand in the presence of God. You need, and, and, and here, and here, here here's Zechariah. Here's Zechariah. I, I see you, angel, and I hear God, but when I look at my resources, when I look at my stuff, I don't see how God's going to do what God said he's going to do with this old war in our stuff. I wish I had somebody in here. And God said to him, I stand in the presence of God. And if God said he's going to do it, he doesn't matter what you have. He doesn't matter what you look like. He doesn't matter how old you is. God's going to do what God said he's going to do. Point to yourself real quick. And say, self. Don't get in the way of what God said he's going to do. Y'all process that for a little while. Because sometimes I look at the church's bank account. Sometimes I look at the membership. Sometimes I look at the gifting. Sometimes I look at the resources and I wonder, God, can you do it? But every now and then, God will send a, a, a Gabriel while I'm praying and said, it's not by your might, nor is it by your power. But uh, come on, come on. But, but, but it's by God's power and ability that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Church, hear me. For someone who may be discouraged, this word this morning, God has sent to Gabriel to encourage you. Yeah, to encourage you that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And then so Gabriel is rendered silent because of disbelief. Zechariah, thank you, is rendered silent because of his disbelief. Here's a quick parenthetic. Don't make God have to shut you up. <laughs> because you don't believe he's going to do what he said. Don't, 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 don't cause God to have to render you quiet because of your disbelief. So look at the text. We're getting there. And it says here, so 24, after these days, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. Won't he do it? Come on, won't he do it? Won't he do it, y'all? His wife, Elizabeth, conceived. And for five months, the text says, she kept to herself, hidden, saying, thus the Lord has done for me in these days when he looked at me to take away my reproach from among the people. I'm getting to the text. God did what God said he's going to do. And for five months, this woman, woman kept silent God did not release her to go public with the realization of what he said he's going to do. So here's, here's this, and we're going to get to Mary real quick. Here's the thing. He released the word, God did it, and she was pregnant and had to keep it to herself. You wonder why that vision is still stuck in you. Come on, come on, come on. Because there's a season when the release of God is not yet. And you've got to hold that thing. And you see, the problem with a lot of us, the reason we can't get to vision is we hear from God, but we go out of the timing of God and want to publicize to everyone when God said, it's not yet. Are you hearing me? So then, so then let me go here. Let me go here. That, that, that's, that's Zacharias and that's Elizabeth. We're going to see them in a little while. So now, God then decides to, to shift gears and he decides to send this same angel now to a virgin by the name of Mary. Now, I, I don't want to assume, make the preacher's mistake to assume that you might know about Mary's and Mary's situation. So may I bear with me for a moment as I read verses 26 all the way to 30, um, what's that? 
through 38 in its entirety just so you can see what's really happening here. So notice what it says. In the sixth month, the text says, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. So the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Come on, say favor. favor. And it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Don't miss this, you all. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, he says, your relative Elizabeth, y'all remember her? In her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her whom was called barren. I love this verse. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I want you to see the difference between Mary's response when Gabriel showed up and Zechariah's response when Gabriel showed up and, and said the same thing. One disbelief resulting in silence. One belief resulting in release. I want y'all to see the two. Are. So, so I, want, I, I wonder which one are you? Which one are you? So now here's what I really came to share with you this morning. With all that context, there's just two simple things that I want you to take away from the text that I'm going to share with you this morning. And the first thing I want you to hear is this, is that, that God always sends his angel, right? Uh, the right person to confirm his purpose in your life. So be encouraged. God has not forgotten you. So as we go through that, so here's the thing. He always, come on, repeat it. He says, self, God always sends the right person to confirm his purpose in my life. When you look at the text now that's in front of us, this whole scenario, Mary has received a word. And then don't forget the fact that the angel said to her, not only did God release his spirit to come speak to you and to impregnate you, but six months prior, the same angel Gabriel had showed up, and that angel had spoken to Elizabeth to also impregnate her and to say what God was going to do. So now Mary, if I'm Mary, and I am, and, 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 and statistics show she was probably 13, probably a young, immature girl that ends up being pregnant, and God says, I'm going to impregnate you, and somehow she believes that, but he says, not only can I impregnate the young, I can also impregnate the old, somebody's missing this. Not only can I, <laughs> yeah, you get this? It, it, it doesn't matter. I can give you a fresh word and make it happen. You could have been waiting a long time, but I can still do the same thing in you. Somebody's still missing it. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 so, and, and so Mary, Mary now wanted to see this for herself. And so here's what the text says. Look at verse 39. So in those days, when the angel left, this is me adding some commentary. Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth, right? So God now is sending her to Elizabeth so they both can realize that God had not forgotten them. And I love this. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. It says here, look, jump down to verse 44. For behold, um, when the sound, she said, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb did what? Come on, it did what? Here's a couple of things. When confirmation comes, there's two experiences that occur. Number one, there is a quickening in your spirit. 
When God comes to you to remind you that he is going to do what he said he's going to do, there is no way, and you've been waiting. Come on, maybe you haven't been waiting long. Maybe you are a Mary where God said it, then it started to happen right away. But that's not my testimony. Come on, are you with me? I've been waiting, and I've been waiting, and I've been waiting. And when God shows up to remind me, there's a quickening that happens. Come on. There's an excitement that occurs within me. And you're wondering, preacher, where you get all this from. Look at the text. Look at the text. Mary shows up, and then listen to what Elizabeth says in verse 41. When Elizabeth heard the greeting from Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, maybe you're skipping this too quick, and uh, you're in such a right-now generation that you just text people, and your text begins with, what's up? Or what's going on? And you're, you're transposing present-day greetings onto the text, and you really don't know what Mary said to Elizabeth that caused what happened to happen. So, so may I use my spiritual imagination just for a little while and assume that I was eavesdropping on the, raw, the wall because I'm wondering what in the world could Mary have said that caused the reaction that she got from Elizabeth? So, so if I'm in the room, here is what I'm sensing may have happened. Mary runs over to her cousin's house. Hey, cousin, how you doing? Man, I travel all the way to see you because something just happened. And then Mary probably started out the conversation of like this. I heard you're pregnant. Look at the details of the text. Look at the details of the text. She's been barren all her life. And for six months, nobody knew she was pregnant. Y'all know the deeds here. Come on. Nobody knew she was pregnant. And all of a sudden, Mary shows up. I heard you're pregnant. And if I'm Elizabeth, what? Where'd you get that from? We don't have Facebook. We don't have Instagram. Come on, y'all. We don't have Twitter. We don't. Where'd you get that? Girl, let me tell you. Remember Gabriel? <laughs> that same angel that told you came to me. And here's what I'm excited about, right? Because let me tell you how Gabriel came to me. And she probably strung it out a little bit. Hey, Elizabeth, you remember how it was when Adam and Eve sinned that God promised he's going to send a Savior to reconcile the world? And she's like, yeah. And you remember how it is every tribe and every generation, every woman would say to their daughter, I hope that you're the one through which the Messiah was going to come. Come on, y'all know this. And you know how it was every generation, every time a prophet would show up, they would say, is that him? Is that him? Is that him but well, girl let me tell you Gabriel told me that God chose me to give birth to the child come on and 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 hold on, hold on. here's Elizabeth shut up <laughs> yeah girl God chose me and, and listen and here is John on the inside six months in embryogic state John starts us out Jesus is here Jesus is here Jesus is here Jesus is here and he's shouting in his mother's womb you gotta get this when God hears your prayers and God comes and God said he's gonna do what he said he's gonna do there is no way you can sit still and not have a quickening in your spirit when God reaffirms his word in your life. Call me crazy, but for the past few months, since we've been on this series on prayer, Pastor Felix could not sit still because I sense God is about to do some things that we have never seen before. Y'all missing me. When you check the atmosphere and see what God is doing, I'm telling you, the timing of God is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you see the people God is sending, the timing of God is here. Your problem is, if you've been looking at who's leaving and trying to dictate the timing of God, sometimes God got to move you. Come on now, to make room for who he wants so he can do what he wants does. So here's what he does. He comes and he affirms and reminds us that he has not forgotten us. I'm excited. I don't know what your dreams were, but I hope you realize today that God has not forgotten you. 
Come on, point to yourself. Say self. God has not forgotten me. Tell your neighbor, said neighbor. God has not forgotten me. So here's what happened. There's a quickening. There's a quickening. There's a quickening that takes place. And the second thing is that you experience what I call supernatural rejuvenation. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, here's what happens. Here's what happened to Elizabeth, right? She got, she got, she, the baby leap, and the text says, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. You ever been tired, and then you don't have the energy to get up and go on, but then after a time of prayer, you wake up rejuvenated. Come on, y'all. Come on. Are, are you with me? I, I've been praying. I've been praying when it comes to this ministry. Praying, said, Lord, my people have been working hard. They've been working a long time. They've been working for many, many years. And yes, we've made some milestones. Yes, we've made some accomplishments. Yes, we've made some things. But as we go into this Christmas season, he says, I just want to remind you that I have not forgotten you. So when I look at them, I say, God, rejuvenate the people. God, rekindle the frame. And when I hear some of you pray and when I hear some of you cry out to God, it affirms the fact that there is a spiritual rejuvenation that's taken place. God will light a fresh fire, and God will do a new thing when he reminds us that he has not forgotten us. Are you hearing me? I'm excited. Come on. I'm excited this morning that God has not forgotten us. And then here's the second thing that I want you to hear to lock into this. Uh, the purpose for this confirmation, when we say God has not forgotten you, the purpose of the confirmation is to remind you again. That he has not, right? And you're probably wondering what that looks like. Three things, three things, okay? Look at the text, then we're going to talk about this. So then, th this is where I really want to encourage you. So it says here, verse 42, and she exclaimed with a loud voice once the baby started leaping. And, and don't think she was whispering. She exclaimed with a loud voice. This is why I said, shut up! <laughs> Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And here's what she said. And why is this granted to me that the mother of our Lord should come to me? And look at the third blessing. Go down to verse five, 45. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Verse 45 is driving me crazy. Okay? So here's the first thing he said. By God says he reminds us by blessing us in three different ways. Number one, that you need to know I chose you before the foundation of the world. Don't make the mistake to think that God was going through the checklist in the book of Matthew chapter 1 and saying, let me see, hmm, who has been naughty and who has been nice? Y'all going to get that in a little while. Don't make the mistake of thinking that that 400 years of silence simply meant that God was in his prayer closet asking the Spirit to direct him to the right young lady. Here's the good news. Before the foundations of the world, he had already chosen her. Come on, are you with me? And ordained her to be the one that was going to give birth to his child. The reason you need to hear me say this is because the thing that's in you didn't just happen to you at the last minute. God chose you before the foundations of the world, and he ordained what he was going to do. So here's the good news. Blessed are you among women and men because God chose you. Are you hearing me? God chose me. God chose you. He chose us to be a blessing to the earth. So number one, because he chose you, there is no way he is ever going to forget you. Y'all yeah, going to get this in a little while. Come, come on, say God chose me. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I assume he chose you too. So here's what he chose you to do. Watch this. To empower you to carry his child. And I add this so you can get this in the form of the Holy Spirit because here's the mistake you'll make. You will see Mary and you'll say, this is just her. That's not me. So look at the second blessing. It says, blessed are you among women, Elizabeth said to Mary. And then she says, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Elizabeth, what are you saying to her? 
She says, Mary, the reason I'm calling you blessed, I get the fact that God chose you, but you got to lock into me. He didn't choose you so people could choose you, so people could worship you. So don't make the choosing about you. Don't walk around talking about I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm highly favored. No, no, no. It ain't about you. Come on. It ain't about the flesh and blood. But this is what it is. It's about the thing that you're carrying on the inside. Come on. He chose you to impregnate you with his Holy Spirit. Because look what it says. Blessed is the child of his womb. Let me help you all with this, okay? This, 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 this is pre the, the era when the Holy Spirit came and entered the earth. But the same child, the same Christ child that was wrapped up in Mary's womb is the same Christ child that is in you. And it's the same Christ Christ child that is in me and lock into this your obligation now is to carry that child and when you go to the hill country and people encounter you the God in you ought to be an affirmation to them that God has not forgotten them I want you to hear me you are carrying the child on the inside and because of what's on the inside there's no way God's going to forget you. <laughs> Lock into this. Once again, if you get your doctrine of the Trinity straight, because this is some heavy theology here, you're walking around with God on the inside. And he, there is no way he's going to forget himself. I wish I had somebody. I wish. <laughs> Maybe that's your issue. You forget who you are. But he doesn't forget who he is. I'm favored because of what is in me. And what I have in me is the gift to you so you can carry him also. So I've been called to help the world get pregnant with Jesus. I wish I had somebody in here. Come on, I wish I had. I wish I had somebody in here. So secondly, 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 he empowers us to carry his child by the Holy Spirit. But then this one, this, this third thing in him remembering me blows me away. Because listen to what Elizabeth said, right? Here's what she said. She says, and blessed is she who believe that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is why Liz was tri tripping. Her husband was a priest. Mary was not a priest. Her husband had devoted his life to the service of the kingdom. Mary was female. She had no access to go in and serve God like that. I wish I had somebody in here. And this priest who was living in the temple day and night. Come on, y'all. Every time the church doors was open, he was there. Matter of fact... If I make, make this connection, he was preaching to the people because it was his turn. Come on, y'all, to serve. He was offering incense on the behalf of the people. He was praying to God probably for Mary and his family and her family. Come on, talk to me because there was some relations going on here. And Elizabeth looks at her and says to her, in her infancy, your, 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 your cousin who is my husband, who is supposed to be a man of God, when God said what he was going to do, he doubted God. And at 13... You heard him, and you don't have no doubt? And you didn't even know how it would happen? And you believe God, listen to this, just because he said it? Oh, y'all not hearing me, y'all not. At his word? At 13? You took him at his word? Listen, that demands a blessing. And here's the thing. You've got folk that God releases a word. And we develop the Zechariah mindset. 
Lord, I look at what we have. Lord, I look at what I have. I look at my age. I look at my education. I look at my ability. I look at my accomplishments. I look at my current job. I look at where I've been. I look at my marital status. Come on. I look at my health. I look at everything around me, and I question you based on what you see. But you've got folk that if God says it, that settles it. It doesn't matter because it came from the mouth of the Lord. Blessed are you. Here's what I'm saying there. This is why it blew me away. Next level vision is going to require a bunch of crazy people that just believe it because God said it. Omar, they thought you were crazy for running, right? For mayor. But look at what, come on, y'all. Are you with me? But because God said it. Are you hearing me? Because God said it. So here's the thing. When God releases a word on your life, don't force God to shut you up because you can't do what he say do. Be like Mary. The next day, get your, I almost cussed, amen. Get yourself up, amen. Yeah. Get yourself up. And hallelujah, amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about what I was going to say. Get yourself up, amen. <laughs> get yourself up and just follow God. Blessed are you. Blessed are the ones that listen, that can walk it out. Just because God said it. And I keep telling you, all I'm crazy enough to believe God's going to do what God said he's going to do here at Restoration Christian Fellowship. Ask me how I know because I know his track record. Are you with me? If he can deliver the Israelites from Egypt... Don't tell me what he can't do. Come on now. If he can part the Red Sea, don't tell me what he can't do. If he can feed people for 40, 40 years in the wilderness without their shoes wearing out, don't tell me what he can't do. If he can kill himself and raise himself up from the dead, don't tell me what he can't do. If he can heal me from cancer and have me cancer-free 11 years later, don't tell me what he can't do. If God said he can do it, settles it because he released the word. Don't tell me what God can't do. I serve a God that all he's got to do is say it and I'm going to walk it out because he said it. And he is looking for people who will trust him like that. He was looking for people who's going to believe him like that. Don't spend time, some of you in here, God has called you to do different things. And don't think a calling is just restricted to the inside perimeters of the church. It could be marketplace ministry, but you're stuck where you are because you're looking at what you have and you're afraid to achieve more. Are you hearing me this morning? God has not forgetting, forgotten you. You don't make the mistake of forgetting yourself. Are you, come Patrick, are you hearing me? If God has said it, walk it out. God does not have capacity to forget his word. Don't view God through human lens, human abilities, human capacity. The text gives you a broad spectrum. 13-year-old girl, ancient man and woman that waited a long time. And in both scenarios, God did what God said he's going to do. My prayer this morning is that we would listen to him. We keep our hand to the plow. Y'all know the scripture. No one who puts his hand and looks back is fit for the kingdom. You hold on, and in the words of Paul, we run with patience the race that is set before us. With our eyes locked into Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. If Jesus can do it, you can do it. If Mary can do it, we can do it. Are you hearing me this morning? So let this season remind you when you see that child being born, Salvation is so important that God did not forget us.
but see yourself as now carrying the Christ child to bring good news to someone else. Bow your heads with me. Holy Spirit, you're a wonderful God. You're an awesome God. You're a gracious God. Thank you for your word, Lord. We pray. My prayer is that regardless of what the situation, the circumstance, that this church will be reminded of the truth that God has not forgotten us. An individual who may be going through a tough time in life may be reminded of the truth that God has not forgotten them. A person who's been waiting on a business venture may realize the truth that you have not forgotten them. But most important, if there's one here who have not given their life to Christ as Lord and Savior, let them see themselves that the whole premise of why we enter into this season to remember your birth is because you have not forgotten them. So whenever we reflect on that baby lying on the manger, it is a reminder that you've not forgotten us. So God, draw them to a relationship. Let them come and say, I want to know God like that. I want to give my heart to God. Let them come and say, I want to be saved. So Holy Spirit, move in this place. Be God in our midst. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. We bless you for who you are, God. So Holy Spirit, permeate the aisles, permeate every seat, land on every heart and convict. And if someone needs to let you in, you're standing at the door knocking. Draw them, God. Draw them. We give this to you, God. Thank you for remembering us. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet.